All right, the next thing I wanted to show you is what we do uh, when we have a problem like this. So uh, if you see here, we've got this, uh, we got this function. It's, it's, it's nothing we've seen before. It, it's, it's linearly increasing. Right, we've got this. We got this strong linear component to it, right? Um, but but it's almost like it's got a linear component. Uh, but then it's also it's also got this uh, sinusoidal behavior, right? So if you look, looks like we've got a sine here. Maybe maybe it goes something like this, right? Um, and it's it's following an upward trend about some line like this or something. So uh, we we have this really really funny behavior. It looks like, man, we should we should be able to do uh, regression on that. Well, uh, as it turns out, we can. Um, it's it's actually uh, not at all that difficult using the things that we've uh, we've already learned. So uh, the first the first thing is that that yes, you can use sines and cosines as the basis functions for your uh, for your interpolation, and so that lends itself well to the to the um, the oscillating portion, we see this is a, this is definitely a periodic signal, uh, and then the other thing is we have linear. Well, uh, we can uh, we can fit uh, the linear part as well. So the first thing we have to do uh, is we have to formalize uh, what I just said. We have to formalize what what we're saying. So uh, this is going to be our function y. I better better do it in the same color. All right, so this is going to be our function y. Uh, so we're going to let's say y hat equals, uh, and then uh, we can just go to the book for the the sine part. So that's a naught uh, plus a one, and, it, and they divide it into sine and cosine, uh, and that's how we deal with the the phase angle. So a one cosine omega naught t plus b1 sine omega naught t. Um, okay, so that's as far as they go. And then, of course, we'll add something more and say, well, we need this linear component. So I'm just going to call that, oh, I don't know, a2, uh, a2 t. Okay, so... Um, then that becomes our uh, our estimation function, um, and so our, our basis is is ones uh, the cosine sine or cosine omega t sine omega t, and then t. So that's our basis, uh, and then um, so uh, we can just we can just go through uh, forward with with the analysis just as we showed before. And so to do that, let me just switch over to math. All right, so here we are. We just um, first, this is just uh, seeding the random number generator, uh, but then we set up the true function x of t, and so we just pick an omega naught, and, and I just picked omega naught equals two. Uh, so then we have a, a sampling frequency or sampling time t s, uh, and then I'm so I'm just generating some data from negative ten to ten, uh, sampled out uh, at point one. And um, and so here's the true function right here, uh, uh, seven plus t plus three sine omega naught t plus two um, rand n sine uh, uh, times the size of t uh, of the size of t. So so what we're doing is is we're we're just we're adding a, a noise with with uh, two standard deviations, uh, two sigma. That's that's the size of the noise here. Uh, n is length x. Uh, and then we're just going to plot that out, and uh, let me switch over to that plot. Well, we're le let's finish actually. Yeah. Uh, okay. So then, then what we can do is we can fit it, and so this is just just what we set up over there. Um, our our z, well, our basis right is uh, ones in the first column, and then cosine omega naught t in the second column. Whoops. And then sine omega naught t in the third column, and then uh, t in the fourth column. So that's just our z, and um, and our y, our right hand side, uh, that matrix is is x or just just our x. That's right. And so our coefficients then are equal to z um, z transpose z 
uh, and then in this back divide that just means that we're solving um, for the coefficients and then the right hand side is z transpose uh, y so this is exactly the same general equation we got before and now I'm just descrambling the coefficients so a naught was the first coefficient a1 is the second coefficient uh, b1 is the third coefficient and then uh, c1 uh, which uh, which was the al alternative way of, of, of uh, demonstrating it or, or of, of representing it was just as a single sign instead of two put together um, so then we have the c1 and this theta that we could come up with but but we don't even need to do that. We can just uh, plot it out here like, like I've done. So we just say xx, and so we're sampling at a, a closer interval is equal to a0 plus a1 uh, cosine omega tt. So I see this tt, I've gone from negative 10 to 10 and 0 0.01. So this is a smaller, a smaller sample time. See, we had 0.1 here. So this is a much smaller sample time. And we're just going to uh, plot that all the way out and show that on the same plot. Okay, uh, so when we run that, uh, this is what we get. So uh, you can see uh, it, it actually fits uh, pretty well. We have the original data in the yellow and then uh, the function that we fit in the red. Now uh, this is this is really fantastic, but um, just to prime you for uh, for the next thing, um, you should notice there was actually one problem uh, before we could go through this we had to know I mean it wasn't a problem we did it but we had to know already this omega naught parameter and so you might ask what what we could do uh, if we don't have that omega naught parameter well uh, we could actually uh, we could do a lot of things but one of the things we could do is just take out the line and or, or even not take out the line but we could look at what the fundamental frequency is and try to and try to detect the frequency content and we can do that with a fast Fourier transform which sort of motivates uh, another example that I'm going to show you of how to extract the frequency content from a signal uh, using the fast Fourier transform but just just as an aside then uh, we could have we could have done that as the first step and we wouldn't have even had to know this omega naught which which I just assumed was given